Hello, my name is David Mullock. Over the past 30 years, I've developed dozens of video games for Activision, Electronic Arts, the Walt Disney Company, and many other publishers. Now, as a game production instructor to college students, I draw upon my experience designing games to make my lessons more engaging and memorable. In this video series, we'll look at a variety of game mechanics that you too can use to make learning a more playful experience. School's about to begin. Think back to the last great game you played. What made it great? You probably felt completely captivated while playing it. The minutes passed by in a blur. You were utterly absorbed and your full attention was devoted to the task at hand. This state of energized focus is what game designers call flow. Flow is that situation where you are immersed in an experience, losing track of time and personal needs. Is that how you would describe students in your classroom? Probably not. Many students think of school as it's depicted on Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Bueller. 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 School is boring and demotivating when it should be exhilarating and engaging. What is it that traditional classrooms are doing wrong? Let's take a look at what some of the research says. According to MIT, students only remember 10% of what they read, 20% of what they hear, and 50% of what they see demonstrated. But when students take an active role in their education, such as when participating in a learning game or virtual world, the retention rate skyrockets to 90%. Now, as any parent can tell you, most kids see homework as an unpleasant chore, but will happily toil for many hours building structures in Minecraft. How's that algebra assignment coming? Dad, get out of here. So what makes game work more engaging than schoolwork? One distinction is that schools typically reward students for compliance, thoroughness, and punctuality, whereas games reward players for experimentation, persistence, and play. The traditional educational model is passive and linear. Student sits at a desk and listens to a lecture. In a game, the experience is action-based and non-linear. The student is struggling with a school subject, he is held back. However, when a player struggles with an obstacle, the game allows him to continue and try new strategies. There is little penalty for failure in a game, encouraging players to experiment. In fact, failure itself serves as a learning tool. When players fail in a game, they acquire new knowledge and develop better skills. Such knowledge and skills become a resource for players, and the more players know, the better they become at playing the game. Game designer Rafe Koster, author of A Theory of Fun, theorizes that this process of constant learning is actually what makes games fun. More and more educators are taking notice that well-designed games represent the best of learning design. Games start easy and then ramp up the difficulty level in such a way that players gain skills as they progress toward mastery. Games also provide models of desired behavior and give targeted feedback to direct players toward emulating that behavior. Game players regularly exhibit persistence, risk-taking, attention to detail, and problem-solving, all behaviors that ideally would be regularly demonstrated in school. How do we turn this game behavior into school behavior? That's where gamification comes in. Gamification is the process of using a playful approach in game mechanics to engage people and solve problems. Gamification seeks to harness human motivation based on the premise that people play games because games are intrinsically rewarding and engaging. Although game developer Nick Pelling first coined the term in 2002, the concept has been in use for decades. The Boy Scouts have long used merit badges to recognize a scout's accomplishments in areas such as camping, electronics, and even game design, much in the same way that games now award achievements for players to display. Businesses use game-like techniques, such as trading stamps, loyalty programs, and celebrations for the one millionth customer to encourage customer retention. Even the paying of taxes has been gamified. But what do we need to do to gamify education? After all, schools already use several game-like elements. Students get points for completing assignments correctly. These points translate into achievements in the form of letter grades. Students are rewarded for desired behaviors 
and punish for undesirable ones using grades as a reward system. And if students perform well, they level up at the end of every academic year. Given all this, it would seem that school should already be the ultimate gamified experience. However, too often, the traditional school environment results in boredom, cheating, and dropping out. There is still something missing from this environment, something that allows video games to excel in engaging kids. In our next video, we will look at some of the game mechanics that have been used to successfully boost player engagement.